Welcome to Tea and Teaching, the educational podcast you can listen to with a cup of tea. I'm Arthur Moore, and it's just me today uh, because, rightly so, Mike Harwell is very busy right in the depths of parental leave. Listeners of the pod will know that was coming up, so a massive congratulations, Mike, on your beautiful baby. I've had the privilege of holding him, and he is awesome, so congratulations to you and Laura. But tea and teaching doesn't stop. And today I am talking with former Blue Peter presenters Simon Thomas and Connie Huck, who have rejoined forces from their Blue Peter days for a new content series for Talking Futures, along with the Gatsby Foundation. The new series is a free online resource that helps parents talk to 11 to 18 year olds about their future education and career options as in, and is called Earn Your badge i'm gonna be talking to connie and simon about why they got involved with this with some top tips about how you can start these conversations and we talk about it from a parent aspect uh from a teacher aspect and just from a aspect of just wanting to have these conversations with the young people who we all work with every single day it's an absolutely lovely conversation full of some top tips that you can use to have those conversations whether it's with your students or with your own children. Um, So put the kettle on and let's get to it. Right, Connie and Simon, welcome to Tea and Teaching. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. As I was just saying off Podder, I grew up with you two mainly on my grand's TV, kind of watching Blue Peter back in the day. So it's it's lovely to kind of come full circle and kind of chat with you about what you're doing at the moment. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the series that you're doing for Talking Futures at the moment? So what we're doing is we're basically, and it's been very timely for me because my boy is now 14 years old. So he's beginning to start to think about, talk about what he might want to do after his GCSEs in a couple of years time, what he might want to do career wise and I think I realized quite early on when myself and my wife Darina started having those conversations is that whilst it was great that he was kind of starting the conversations when it came to the options available to him I felt a little bit out of my depth because so much has changed since I was a kid (laughs) just in terms of what's available to them educational wise after GCSEs what the career paths might be in terms of whether he goes to university or not. So I felt really ill-equipped. And it was really timely that the Gatsby Foundation got in touch with myself and Connie and asked if we'd be interested in being part of this Talking Futures campaign and doing these films for the website. Because actually what this is ultimately about is enabling parents to have what can be quite difficult conversations because it's big life conversations. And sometimes with our children, they can get a bit defensive. So exploring different ways of enabling those conversations and then equipping parents really in the knowledge that we're never always going to have the answer to everything, but just helping equip each other to have some of the answers when the questions come. And because it's really not an opt out this area I don't believe as a parent I think we have an integral part to play in our children's decision making in the decisions they make regarding their education ultimately one day Ethan's decision on what career he decides to go to will be his but we want to be there to help him along as much as we can and so this is just a brilliant way the the Talking Futures campaign of, of just saying to parents we're with you on this. We want to encourage you, want to help you have those conversations. And we want to give you all the tools you're going to need. It's really interesting you say that. So I'm just as a secondary teacher. I've had those discussions with just thousands of kids across the years. And you, you can have. always tell those students who have kind of had those conversations at home, whether it's with parents, with guardians, carers, grandparents, yeah. whoever. You can kind of tell the students who are always kind of having those conversations um, How do you tell that? What 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 do you see in them that's different? They've they've had time to consider where they want to go, mm. and they're now thinking about the steps they want to they need to do in order to get to those places. So quite okay, often, yeah. When you first have those conversations, students might say, "Oh, I want to do this," or "I want to be that." But the students who have had a little bit of guidance or have just had those conversations have said, "Well, they've broken down that big A to Z." into some more manageable chunks. And I think that's where kind of what you're talking about with your son of those conversations are so important because you don't just want to say, 
oh, I want to be this. Therefore, I'm going to do everything to do this. But you say, oh, well, here are some doors that we need to open. What do you need to think about doing for GCSE? What do you think you need to do for a level like their careers are going to change aren't they but we just want to keep yeah, the doors open as possible and I'm, is that kind of your perspective as parents totally you don't want to dictate to them so you want to leave you know enough room for maneuver enough doors open so that they're not limiting themselves um but then also you want to help navigate support and guide them and it's kind of like a fine balancing act essentially um, and also, you know, if you're too dictatorial or if you're too obstructive for certain things that they might want to pursue, then they're not going to want to chat to you. They're going to close down. And it's such an important time, the secondary school years. And it's such a pivotal time as well, because this is where the adults, they become sh shaping and forming, essentially. No, I completely agree with kind of you need to let them lead the conversation, but you yes. need to as parents, you kind of need to kick off the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and is that something you found just as parents? Like, do you have any kind of tips just purely as parents of kind of, or after all the work you've kind of done on this series for Talking Futures of how do you start those conversations? I think don't build them up to be something absolutely massive and do it in a quite relaxed, casual context. So what Con and I have done with these three films that we've made with Talking Futures is we've done basically what Blue Peter quintessentially demanded of its presenters, which is you communicate, you present whilst you are doing something. It's why the famous Blue Peter audition featured lots of different scenarios like that. So I did have to interview someone on a trampoline. I did have to talk to the camera whilst doing a make. So Coddy does a very brief reprise of the famous Tracy Island mate. We make a bit of bar banana bread together. I do a challenge where I have to pin as many badges on Connie as possible to try and break her Blue Peter record. We came nowhere near breaking her record. <laughs> but it's really underlining that often the best conversations, and it's not always, but often the best conversations with your children are when you're either doing something together or you're on a walk. I find with Ethan most of my best conversations with him where he's at his most open tend to be when I'm just driving him somewhere in the car because he's sat next to me we're not looking into each other's eyes and therefore he's on the back foot it tends to lead to more open conversations so we're, we're trying to encourage parents to you know not turn this into something so massive that we just don't want to do it but just say look there's, there are some really quite simple ways of, of bringing these conversations into play that that don't involve some big moment where you sit down around the table or on chairs in the lounge or whatever it might be. And, and then when those conversations happen, having a few things up your sleeve so that if they do ask the question, you know, I've thought about like Ethan's asking about journalism at the moment. And obviously because of what I've gone on to do, that's something I've got a bit of knowledge on, but also I'm aware that the options available to him beyond school are vastly different and more plentiful than they were when I left school. There was three media courses, and I think, in the entire country when I left school in the early 90s. Now it's the complete opposite of that. There's loads of courses. So for me as a parent, it's about going, OK, I, if, if this is something he carries on wanting to do, and it may change, you're right, it could change next year and he wants to be something completely different. But just giving myself and my wife, Darina, the best support we can to each other by getting across this stuff it's really interesting you say having those conversations kind of not as a formal staring at each other across the table really intense like as a teacher and educator I've had those conversations with students about loads of things and sometimes it means as you said going for a walk kind of having something else to focus on and then those conversations they naturally come and we do that with our friends don't we like if we want those big conversations like we ask, do you want to go for a walk or do you want to meet up here? We don't say, do you want to come and sit the opposite side to my table and stare at me while we have this really intense conversation? Well, yeah, often definitely. the most honest conversations back in the day when people didn't leave voice notes or send text messages, <laughs> when, you, when you used to chat on the phone, it used to be some of the most open and honest conversations because you weren't kind of looking at each other. It's mm. disarming when you're not staring at each other. I mean, so listen, there is a place for that. I wouldn't encourage... You know, if you if you if you're married or with a partner, not not to ever have a conversation where you don't look at each other. But there are some conversations in life we have that just are a little bit a little bit easier when you're not eyeballing someone. 
Yeah, it's it's disarming and it's nice to be doing a fun activity or something together. That you're enjoying it. So they're not associating that conversation with sort of an intense environment or a daunting scenario, but they're associating it with sort of a fun scenario, which is just so much better. It's so much more conducive to getting more out of them and making them feel relaxed than actually getting to the authentic them and the truth of what they are feeling or thinking. You could have a conversation while building Tracy Island once again. I actually had that Tracy Island, Connie. I had that Yay! In, in, <laughs> in the flat with my parents and many, many hours spent on that. So I should probably give a shout out for my mum who put an awful yeah. lot of work into you that. Should. So, yeah, thanks, mum. Um, yeah, no, that was awesome. I also think what's really a really nice way to go back is just asking your son, daughter, just like, what are you passionate about? Like, what really gets you interested in in learning? Because so often our students are so focused on what they want to become they see the end goal they don't think about all the time they're going to have the to spend on that journey and as you two probably know really well if you're not passionate about what you're doing it's really really difficult to kind of break through in whatever sector you kind of want to go into yeah and it's also really important as a parent that you don't project onto them what you think so when Ethan initially said I I really want to be a journalist straight away I'm thinking well I've seen no signs of anything that would suggest he really wants to be a journalist because obviously that's a world in which I now operate. But a better conversation with him was, was beginning to find out what's behind that. So what's he really interested in? Does he have that natural curiosity that you're going to need as a journalist? Has he got a, enough of a passion about it to maybe think, as I suggested to him the other week, you know, I said, has your school got a school magazine? He said, no. I said, that is such a good start. If this is something you really want to do, why don't you have a chat with your teachers, have a chat with some of your friends if they're interested in this and start a school magazine? Because if one day you do become a journalist and you're sat in that very first interview, they're going to want to see a history of interest in journalism. And if you can say, when I was 14 in 2024, I began my school's first ever school magazine. That's a great little thing to have on your CV. So rather than project your kind of opinion onto them that I don't think that's probably the best thing for you it's it's much better to go okay you're interested in doing that let's have a chat about it why, why are you interested in doing that have you thought how you're going to go about doing that so you kind of disarm the conversation a little bit you're encouraging them not to give up on the dream but you're posing the kind of questions that gets them to think through whether this is actually really the dream they want to follow and Connie making these videos and all this content i was just wondering if it's kind of allowed you to reflect upon what you will now do with your kids and kind of what you would take away like what are you hoping parents are gonna they're gonna watch these videos and then they're gonna go away and kind of what's the catalyst you want them to be kind of doing yeah so basically they're gonna watch these videos and start opening up those conversations or looking for a gateway into those conversations and if you've got any sort of worries or any sort of um, doubts over whether you're doing it in the right way on the website the Talking Futures website there are so many resources tools activities tips hints um, really really good support for parents to help navigate these conversations there's all sorts of different things like there's a career jigsaw career detective um, where you can put in things that your child likes doing you can be with your child and to talk about what subjects they like what their interests are what their passions are what their hobbies are you know and input all of these things and it can come up with suggestions of areas that might be good for them to investigate you know there's so many different ways that you can do this that don't have to be sort of a boring dull eyeballing conversation but something that's fun you know um, there's conversation starter cards. Each set of cards takes about 20 minutes and you can discuss them, you know, while you're doing something. You can complete them while having dinner or cooking or making Tracy Island even, um, you know, <laughs> if you're that way inclined. So there's loads and loads of sort of opportunities and, and pathways for parents to go down when they want to embark on, on discussing this with their kids. And as you've both kind of alluded to, like the world is so different to when we were all growing up. It's it's about helping our young people understand kind of 
the journey that they're going to go on. I've said that word a couple of times, but it was something I always came back to as a teacher. And I would also say as parents, guardians, like you can also then reach out to the school. Like if your child has said they're really passionate about this subject, talk to their teacher and see, are they displaying a certain, if it's history, what are they really interested about in history? What can you do to support them? Because teachers have like, they've had these conversations so many times. They've got such a brilliant wealth of knowledge. And if you kind of, if you're having that conversation with your your child and then you're bringing the teacher into it, then you've got this whole kind of community helping kind of yeah. raise the child, isn't it? Yeah, two-pronged approach. And the, the teacher will see your child in a very different environment than you see your child. So they might have noticed a propensity to something, an interest in something that you might not have picked up on because a learning environment is very different from a home environment. So it is, it's a really good tack actually to to sort of combine combine forces essentially when did either of you two realize like the career paths you've gone down are the ones when, like when did you think like i want to be like on tv i want to be kind of doing this was it something you had those conversations about or was it just kind of an organic moment i don't think i ever had a conversation with my dad until i came out of university i definitely knew broadcasting was the thing I was most interested in felt would be the best thing for me um it wasn't really till at university I started doing anything about it and started presenting on a internal tv station at Birmingham University which was awful but it was a good place to start and then I came out of university and I'd had a period at uni where I thought it's probably never going to work out I'll probably never make it in tv it's so competitive so let's do something normal and I had a sort of phase of just trying lots of different things in terms of going for interviews I went for a graduate trainee selection day at Hendon for the Metropolitan Police Force I mean I had a lucky escape because I failed the medical because I had a couple of operations on my knee when I was 16 for cartilage and got and got thrown off the course because they didn't want to pay my pension if my knee messed up so I escaped the police I ended up doing a bizarre graduate trainee selection day at John Lewis department store on Oxford Street no idea why I found myself there but I was just scrabbling around thinking I don't know what I'm going to do but I eventually got to the end of university and thought no it is broadcasting I remember my dad being if I'm honest a little bit disappointed I think he looked at me and thought well, you've got good A-levels you've got a history degree why do you want to go and be a TV presenter but when I did eventually make it he and my mum were immensely proud but yeah I definitely had a period where I was all over the place and I think when I look at Ethan now and we've got an 18 month old daughter so what on earth the world looks like when she's Ethan's age I have no idea it's a scary thought but I, I think back to me then and I'm very prepared for Ethan to change tack at any moment on what he wants to do because I was still doing it at university but I think deep down I knew broadcasting was the thing I wanted to do but I think if I'm honest initially I was put off by thinking I was never going to make it but once I discovered that belief and that determination and that commitment and that drive to go for it then everything changed just really interesting the journeys we come on isn't it um michelle so people have listened to this and they're interested in kind of they want to go and find this content where do they go to with all the talking futures uh it's the talking futures website is talkingfutures.org.uk it's for parents it's got all the resources that connie talked you through but i think bear in mind like your podcast in particular arthur we work um i'm actually i'm from it's the gatsby foundation that runs the Talking Futures campaign. And for anybody who's got career guidance responsibilities in schools, they'll probably have heard of the Gatsby benchmark. So uh, we're all over careers when it comes to supporting schools and parents. And we work with the careers and enterprise company on Talking Future support for teachers to have better conversations and bring the parents in as well. Um, so we've got the Talking Futures website for parents but through the careers and enterprise company, there's resources and toolkits and CPD for teachers in bringing parents in. Awesome. We'll have all the link. <clears throat> we'll have all the links to all that information uh, in the episode notes, so you can go and check those out uh, and check out the new content. Um, Michelle Simon Connie, it's been I massively appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on Team and Teaching. Absolutely. Thanks pleasure. so much. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Mike.
Well, wasn't that a lovely conversation with Simon and Connie and Michelle Weir from Talking Futures uh, about the really awesome content they're putting out with kind of that nostalgia twist on it of, we spoke about Tracy Island and we, that really does take me back. Um, and it's such an important conversation to be having with our young people as they grow up in the world. Um, we've spoken many times on this pod about teaching content and knowledge to our young people but we are also preparing them for the big wide world and these conversations are so important and as we all know as educators it's not just the teachers having those conversations it's kind of everyone in being involved with those conversations to support our young people so thank you so much uh, to simon Comey, and michelle for your time all the links will be in the episode notes if you want to go and check out that stuff um, or share your tips with each other about how you can have these conversations at T and teaching on Twitter. Um, and we'll speak to you next time, hopefully with Mike Harrowell back, though he's very busy. Uh, take care and we'll speak to you soon.